Rhodes' kick, it's a great one. It goes deep into the end zone. That one sailed into yeah. the end zone. <laughs> Where's that bet? Yeah. Pretty good. Man, that was big time. Well, we'll get the Bison house offense back out there. And, and like we said, it's been a total you know, top-to-bottom effort from Case's defense. We look at the, the first-half stats, as you touched on. Bethany, 31 yards rushing. Not great. 16 yards passing. Really not great. So really a stat booster for the Case Western defense now. It takes a lot of mental fortitude to keep that going for four quarters. You don't want to have a bust. There are really good athletes over there for, for Bethany. Don't want to be giving up any chunk plays. So keep doing what you're doing and get out of here with a win. Pass tipped and falls incomplete. Boy. Somebody had eyes on that one for a pick. Man, it's just been tough, tough sledding. You know, and even in that case, finally give them some time to get the pass off and they get their hands up and, and disrupt the throwing lanes. So more of the same so far. This is Hodo with the pitch. Needs a block, does not get it. And that Spartan defense will tackle Hodo for a loss of three. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to get up off the ground so we can figure out who it was. Someone was out there and got off a block of a wide receiver and went up and made a play. It looks like it was Sakalo, our old friend, who made the transition from outside linebacker to safety. So he said a little banged up, dealing with a little bit of a foot injury. But so far, he's been out there, I think, for the majority of the defensive snaps and able to, to make a disruptive play there. Had three tackles in the opening half. This is Robinson. He'll roll and throw on third and long, and it's incomplete. But Colin Schuster had an opportunity to just blow up that wide receiver you know, I, and wisely pick not to. I'm going to be honest. Five years ago, I'm probably making that hit. Yeah. <laughs> probably getting flagged. Coach Miller is going to have my butt for it, and it'd be a first down. But smart play. He's a veteran out there. He knows it's incomplete and no reason to, to risk it with the referees. So a familiar sight if you're a Bison fan watching today. The punt team is on the field. T.J. Yoder will return it for the Spartans. He's standing at midfield. Punts have worked out pretty well. Yoder will catch it, oh. fair catch on the 50. There will be a flag thrown as Bison ran into Yoder as he was trying to bring that one in. So that's going to give him real good field position. It's one of those things you can't do. Got to give him room. Can't catch any interference. Picking team, number two. 15 yard penalty, first down. Welcoming to our broadcast now, Joe Andurko, the commissioner of the pack. Welcome to Case Western Reserve. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. Great to be here. What a what a beautiful day. It's hard to believe we almost got snow earlier in the week. But right. Uh, <laughs> so you know, Joe, come on out over here. Yeah, We're gonna sure. show everybody. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, you got a jacket and a tie. <laughs> it's like 70 degrees. I know. I know. What can I say? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I clean up well on occasion. You but, do. Uh, yeah, glad to be here. I mean, I always enjoy coming over to Cleveland and watch and seeing Case play and uh, seeing the good folks over here. So it's uh, it's a shame it's, it's it's a shame it's a fall break. You don't have quite the crowd here you usually have at a at a Case football game, but still nice to see everyone. Joe, did, did you have broadcasting in your background? I do. Timeout. You have yes. a great voice. Injury Thank timeout. You. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Uh, I was a uh, legend in my own mind in okay. broadcasting, Ron, but uh, no, yeah, a little bit early on. But Where'd you go to school and were you doing it in college? I went to Robert Morris uh -huh. over in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah. And uh, actually, I didn't do it in college, even though I was a communications major, but I did like DJ like weddings and things like that just to get through yeah. college, just make some money here and there. So good for yeah, you. Yeah, it was, uh, it, you know, what you have to do when, early on to get through, if you know what I mean. So, so, Joe, what brings you here today? Well, you know, part of my role is I, I get around to all of the PAC campuses during the fall semester and, and we've been growing and grew again this year so we're up to 13 schools 11 full members and then Case and Carnegie Mellon being uh, affiliate members in football so this is my first stop of the day I'll actually be heading over to Teal over in Greenville PA tonight they've got a, a night kickoff against Waynesburg so. so how long of a drive will that be for you probably, probably about an hour and 20 minutes well. something like that it's not too, over to greenville is not too bad from here so i actually grew up around in the pima tuning lake area right okay. on the pennsylvania ohio line so grew up a cleveland fan and came over here quite a bit as a kid that's sean michael james the fullback out of the backfield well, i don't, I don't know, know if he, he went was down, down. Yeah, yeah i think he might have a case on that he one. is <laughs> saying the same thing we are i mean he went up and over but i don't know that his knee ever hit there let's take a look at it 
The Pima Tuning area. I've yeah. camped many times. Have you? Pima okay, Tuning great. Lakes. I grew up on the Pennsylvania side of it, but my dad was a Browns fan, so I became a Browns right. fan. I, I've cursed him for it ever since, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, it's been rough the last <laughs> decade, maybe more. But we used to come over as a kid to the old stadium and, and come over 322 to Mayfield Heights and then bring the East Shore way in. And that was a, as a kid, that was a, that was a great memory growing up. So how old are you? Uh, 52. So you and I are of the same era. I'm 57. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we watched those teams together. Oh, yeah. sure. And they were real good teams. In they, the, in those the were, I mean, yeah. I have some of my best memories growing up. I, my best friend and I would come over at Old Municipal Stadium and sit in the outfield in that first row for like a four dollar ticket. Yeah, here it is. Let's see. I uh, he, he never went I don't down. Think he went down. No, he never did. Yeah. That's one of those anticipation Back whistles, I think. Did you say four dollar ticket? Oh, back in the day, absolutely. Yeah. And general admission out in left right field. Oh, I love going to, over to the old Muni Muni Stadium. This is Saxton in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Orsini with blockers in front of him. And Antonio, I think he tripped over the 15-yard line. <laughs> Trying to cut it back to the right side. He had space on the right side. A Antonio, obviously a great player for this team for several years. And one of the many players coming out of the Western Pennsylvania area. I think one thing Greg's done very well is you know recruiting kids over there by saying, hey, your, your family's going to get to see right. all your road games. We're coming to Western PA for all of them. And you can see it reflected in their roster. Orsini's from Pittsburgh. Blamer, their left tackle from Pittsburgh. Just looking across the roster here right now. Yeah, Drew quickly. Saxton from South Fayette. Yep. Oh, there you go. And there's a touchdown. Spartans. And that's Riley Nurick. Yeah, just a uh, just made one man miss and it was off to the races here. Saxton, of course, right on the money with the throw. Touchdown. You can hear to see one juke move, and it's off off to pay dirt. Yeah, beautiful move by Riley Nurk. That quick pass out in that that immediate flat oftentimes doesn't work because, as you said, Joe, it's gotta you got you gotta make that first defender miss. That's right. And and that time he did. And just another really efficient drive for this Spartan offense. This is Rhodes. The point after touchdown is up and good. And with 12 minutes and 50 seconds left to play in this third quarter, the Spartans improve the lead to 24-0. So, Joe, I think maybe the, the elephant in the room question. Sure. If Grove City wins today and they win out, yeah, although they're losing to Westminster. They are. That's correct. Yeah. If Carnegie Mellon wins until the final week of the season here at Case, and if Case wins <coughs> out, if Case beats Carnegie Mellon, and Carnegie Mellon and Grove City and Case all have one loss. Sure, sure. And Carnegie Mellon beat Grove City, Grove City beat Case Western Reserve, and Case Western Reserve beat Carnegie Mellon. What happens? If it's one of those situations where they have one loss each, they, they've all beaten each other, so they're one-to-one, head-to-head. -one, head. The, and there's no perfect way to do this, but what our coaches settled on several years ago, those three games, it will be scoring differential. So basically, who has the best plus minus in the wins mi in wins of those games? Gotcha. So it would basically come down to that last game, which it, it looks like it's going to do anyway yeah. between Case and Carnegie Mellon. Because the Spartans lost by a point to That's Grove right. City, That's so right. that that is actually That's in actually their in your, favor. In their yeah. favor, yeah. right? So assuming, uh, and let me think, uh, Carnegie Mellon beat Grove City by seven. So you, I mean, you could do the, the math of what win, you would have to do. If yeah. everything plays out and the Spartans win, mm -hmm. then that would that would be in their favor. They would be more than likely. More than likely. Yeah. 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 And uh, now I will say, I just checked before I came in here. Fourth quarter, Westminster on top of Grove City, 24 to seven. So if that's the case, right. then now out. we're heading towards a right. mano imano yep. head, head, heads up uh, matchup potentially between Case and Carnegie in the academic bowl. And here the in three 36th weeks. academic bowl, that's and they right. wouldn't want it any other way, right? And, and I, if that's the case, I'll be back here for it with the PAC trophy in hand. You should join us on the broadcast when you come back. I'd love to, absolutely. Quick handoff's going to pick up two. You know, in the first half, this Spartan defense. They ran 19 plays, yeah. Bethany yeah. did, yeah. 47 total yards. Yeah. Yeah. That's I just mean, over two yards of play, which isn't good. That That's what I noticed about this Case team this year is just the improvement on the defensive side of the ball. You, you know, a year ago after they had gone so long with, you know, not playing, uh, you, you saw some holes there. Oh, it's pick, pick six. And this is a pick six. And walking into the end zone for the Spartans is DJ Wolf. Touchdown, Case Western Reserve. 
could see it in the Bethany players here, just getting a little disheartened. I thought they, I actually thought Bethany hung in there well in the first half. They weren't able to move the ball well, but their defense did some good things. They got some stops deep in the territory. But boy, that's just a crusher when you get that uh, pick six when you're trying to get something going there. I completely agree with your assessment of Bethany in the first half. I thought they probably should feel very good. Yeah. Yeah. As to, you know, obviously not offensively, but defensively, they did a really they nice job nice things. against right. the high power, yeah. high, high powered scoring Case yeah, Western Br Reserve team. Brandon Robinson, the head coach of this, he's the first year head coach of this Bethany team. And I, and I have to tell you, Ron, he, he's done some nice things. I, I really think he has. Any new coach is going to need three to four years to get his players in place, his system in place. But I think he's really, what I've seen that they've done fundamentally, I think he's, he's trying to build a foundation. The hard thing in a place like that is you got to keep the when you're not getting the reward when you're not getting the wins how do you is just keeping that cohesiveness uh keeping the retention not losing kids i think if he can do that and bring in some classes i think he can get it going the right direction well they've been completely outsized today sure uh, and and because of that i, I really think They've played well, even yeah. even with that. You know, Coach Debelak talked uh, pregame to us about, you know, obviously, you know, the respect that he has for Coach Robinson. He yeah. knew him at Baldwin Wallace, right. where he was the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach. But Coach Deb's also very, very big fan of the defensive coordinator for Beth. Absolutely, and yeah. that was proven true in the first yeah, half. Yeah, you saw it. They yeah. had some big plays, made some stops, and and did some really good things. I thought in, in the first half and. So now it's that you know you're reaching that point in the game where it's you're, you try to keep things positive. You look for your victories where you can if you're them, and you know it's tough because you're going up against a team. I, I was talking to some folks over in the in the kind of the development area. I said you know the thing that I always say about Coach Debelak, he's so efficient in how he coaches. Right. I mean, in every way, there's just efficiency, and so because of that, you just don't see those those gaps, those holes that you can attack. Um, you may outplay them, but, but you're not going to find anything, any chinks in the armor, so to speak. Rhodes, I don't know what he had for breakfast this morning <laughs> or if he was rubbing some sort of special cream on his left leg, but he is kicking the ball like I have not seen him kick right? it today. Yeah. You know, we don't inspired, have a, Inspired by fall break, I guess. Yeah, we don't have a dome here where we can blame it on either the open air. Did you see what Aaron Boone said about the Yankees' I inability? I, I did. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I feel so bad for those $250 million Yankees. <laughs> you know, they, they, they're so aggrieved. You know? Yeah, reference to the fact that <laughs> they weren't able to hit home runs in Houston because they had the dome open. <laughs> so Bethany with some work to do. And they'll go to Hodo, and he gets absolutely nowhere. You know, you, you talked about watching this defense develop over this year and, and even from last year. Yeah. Last year, you know, the Spartans had had a defense that I think of the 11 players, eight of the 11 were actually in their first year of college football That's right. That's because right. of the COVID season yep. when the Spartans didn't play in the spring. So those freshmen were sophomores, but they were really freshmen That's and then right. the incoming freshmen. The COVID year really put this program uh, in, in a tough, tough spot. Um, you know, when we, especially in the spring of 21, when we were, uh, we did our limited schedule. You know, we did just a five-game schedule, and Case was in a situation that they just couldn't move forward with that. And I know that was frustrating for Coach Debs, and you know, but I th and I think maybe there was some, there was definitely some after effect a year ago. But I think where you really saw it earlier this year on was the W and J game. Right. I mean, I wasn't here, but I watched that entire game, and usually I just watched that. Felt like okay, Case is back. Yeah, this that was is the Case program I remember. Yeah, that was one to hang your hat on for sure. Third and ten. That Spartan defense staying tough. Although some running room for Robinson. He's going to get the first down, and he's tackled at the 37-yard line. So credit Marquise Robinson with seeing the open field and taking advantage of what the defense gave him. Nice cut, too. I mean, it looked like he had some room to the left, cut back right, and got the first down. And you know, Again, when you're Bethany and you're a first-year head coach and you're, you're trying to find those little victories just like that, Bethany looks across at the Spartans, moving the football. Hodo with it. 
gets it up to the 39-yard line. So you mentioned, and is there a fumble on that play? No, they're going to say the ball down. was down. Was down. Yep. You mentioned expansion in, yes. in the PAC. Next week, Spartans go to Allegheny. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're thrilled to have the Allegheny Gators back. Uh, just so you, just for the fans that don't know, Obviously, Case has a long history in the PAC going right. back to its founding. Allegheny does as well. They were members of our league from 1958 to 84 before leaving and joining as a uh, charter member of the North Coast Athletic Conference, of course, which was based here in Cleveland. Dennis Collins, the longtime commissioner there. Uh, but just in this past year, have decided to come back to the PAC. Um, I think there are a number of reasons for that. I think they feel like competitively it's a good fit for them. And, and I think the North Coast has kind of been expanding westward, like into Indiana with the addition of Wabash and DePaul and schools like that. And Allegheny is just kind of hanging out there, you know, on the eastern yep. <laughs> eastern end of things. So we're thrilled to have them back in. I think you know, they just won their first championship last week, won our women's tennis championship. Um, I, I, it, 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 they, they strengthen us in every way, academically, athletically, and culturally. Third down and 12. That was Caden Tong on that sack. Robinson to throw. Pressure again. He's going to run it yep. with some space, and he'll get, I think, close to another first down. There's a fumble, but the ground caused the fumble. The line judge identifies that right away. He's about a half yard short. Yeah, I was going to say, that mark is just slightly before the 46, so I don't know that he quite has it. They may measure this. So, Joe, down 31-0. Yeah. If you're if you're Coach Robinson on the opposite side of the field, third and a half yard, or fourth and a half yard, you going for it? I'd go for yeah. it here. Yeah, I mean, at it, it, 31 nothing game, again, you're trying to build those little positives. And uh, you've seen two good quarterback runs, especially there where they really whiffed on the uh, uh, on the block, and he just made a great athletic play to, to get up to the 46. I wonder yeah. if the style of the young coaches in the NFL has changed the way that coaches across the country sure. at all levels in sport yep. of football look at the fourth down situation. <laughs> and, and you could argue it's for better or for worse, depending on where you yeah. fall on that. But, I mean, you look here in Cleveland with Stefanski, certainly the, the Chargers head coach who was at John Carroll. Yep. I mean, they are they are uber aggressive. And, you know, I, I understand the analytics, why they are. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I, I think you're right. There's a change in mindset that's definitely taken place with that new breed of young coaches in the NFL. Hodo's going to get across the 50 up to the 49. And this is, without a doubt, the most impressive drive of the game for Bethany. 820 left and counting. So back to expansion for a yeah. second, Joe. When you look for a fit, correct. what type of college university is that fit for the PAC? Well, I think if you look at our uh, if you look at our current lineup, they're all private schools. Let's start there, okay? And they're all schools that have are very serious about academics and integrating athletics into the overall educational mission. Um, so I think if you look at that, there's not a whole lot of opportunities out there. The other thing I would add, especially for a conference with our history, it's not a requirement that you have football to be in the PAC, but I'll tell you what, it goes a long way. Um, we, we had, for many years, had a rule you had to have an active football program to be a member. We have since gotten rid of that, but we only have two members that don't have football in Chatham and Franciscan. Everybody else does. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think when you have those conversations, it starts out very private. You know, obviously, those are very sensitive things that impact things even beyond athletics. And uh, so we, the, with Allegheny, we probably started conversations two years before with them before finally leading up to them joining this fall. So let me ask you this, from a competitive standpoint, from an athletic competitive standpoint, you had mentioned high academic standards at all Absolutely. the PAC schools. How important is that for the fit? Because you could really get yourself into a situation where somebody has a competitive advantage sure. if they don't have to meet academic stringent requirements that, that everybody else does. No question. And, and that, that's why I give a lot of credit to Case and Carnegie because they have incredibly high academic standards and yet are still able to be as competitive as they are uh, on the football field. Now, they probably have some other advantages, whether it be resources or whatever, that the other schools don't. But, I mean, you know, if you look at the average GPA, high school GPA or SAT or ACT on this Case team, I mean, it's impressive. So, you know, every school has challenges to get through, but your point is a good one. We, there is a level playing field in that every, every one of these schools has 
very high academic standards. He's very serious about it. And uh, that reflects what you see on the on the sporting field. Up, oh, bad luck there. Fullback had the football and he yeah. had running room, but he, he got tripped up. That was Charlie Mills, who we've seen a little bit of today. And we got a Bison offensive lineman down as well. That's 61. Timeout, injury timeout. On the field holding his right hamstring, maybe his calf, is Tyler Pierce. And that offensive line is a work in progress right now for Bethany. I think they'll tell you that. The Spartan defensive side will certainly tell you that. It's one of the reasons we see a lot of running and a lot of read pass option from their quarterback. Right. They just they don't have the the level yet to to block for an extended period of time Correct. for a drop back passer. But getting back to expansion, it's one of the things we really focused on. When I first came in as commissioner, um, I think there were seven schools in the league. Uh, you know, St. Vincent and Geneva came in, Chatham came in, and then we've added in recent years Franciscan, Allegheny, Case and Carnegie came back as affiliate members in 2014. So, I mean, I think we've kind of built to where we want to be. Could I see us get, maybe getting one school bigger, possibly? I couldn't see us getting much bigger than right. that, though. Uh, if you get to 12, you can do some interesting things. I mean, you can do divisions, you could do a potentially a championship game. But it would have to be the right one. We're not going to just add a school just to get to 12. Joe, as we're looking at third and eight here for Bethany, what are some brag points for you in the PAC right now? Some some things, and it doesn't necessarily have to go as a sure. penalty flag is thrown. It's a motion penalty on, on the Bison, so they'll make it a Prior third to and the 13. Snap. But False start. The, Offense, I, the, number eight. But Five things that penalty. Yeah. You know, you're really proud third of down. that are happening right now. I would say the biggest one, the biggest thing we hang our hat on is the Academic All-America program, uh, especially with football. Uh, during the COVID year, uh, we had, there were 50-some Academic All-Americans named for Division Three, and that's out of 25 conferences. 11 of them came from the PAC, wow. including at Case, including at Carnegie Mellon. I mean, it, it, what we see are these kids who are academic, and athletic superstars. And so that's what excites me the most. It's not just that they're, there's a nice completion. Um, it's not just that they're great athletes and they can make great plays, but to see what they do in the classroom, to see the, the postgraduate scholarships they get, to see where they go on to success in their businesses and careers, uh, that's what's the most heartwarming for me. That was Deion Parker with that big catch on third and 13. You know, your your story just now made me smile because it reminded me, and that's Hodo who slips as he tried to cut from the right to the left. Years ago, I was talking to Coach Bill Sudik, who of yeah, course sure. is a legend here. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was a long time not only track and cross country coach, but basketball coach. And this track's named after him. There's a bronze bust of him as you walk into the gym. Uh, in the Veal Center, and, and Coach Sudik said to me, he said, Ron, I haven't coached anybody that's made it to the NBA, that's but right. I've coached a lot of CEOs of business, surgeons, doctors, lawyers, and, and he just went on and on with those high-profile type positions, engineers that, you know, are born in a, at a school like Case Western Reserve. Absolutely, and it, it, it's funny, I, I, and I can see Coach Sudek saying this. I've heard several coaches in the PAC say it when, they, when they're really successful and somebody asks them, how do you compare this team to, to your past great teams? And a lot of times they'll say, well, we need to wait 20 years to see. And what they mean is, obviously, they're great athletically, yeah. but let's see what they do when they get past their college. And it's just like you said, they're, they're your leaders in your community. They're your, your business owners. They're your leaders of, of community organizations. Uh, that's when you really see who is, who is taking the lessons that they got in their four years on campus and made the most of it. Third down and long again. 13 again, and this pass is too high, and it's incomplete as it sails out of bounds. That was Trey Dean who tried to go up and get it. And this is, again, a fourth down situation that down 31-0, and yeah, you're actually got, enjoying some success. Yep. They're going to go ahead and, uh, and, and continue to yeah, do this. I think if you're Bethany, you've got to take a shot here. It's uh, fourth and 13, low percentage, but you're at the 30-yard line, and, and you've made some good things happen on this drive. If you can uh, you know, find a way to keep it going, uh, yeah, I think they're going to 
take what they can here. Joe, the sun at <laughs> this time of the afternoon is beating right into the glass on us right now, and I will not think less of you as you have sweat on your face <laughs> if you right. loosen that tie and take the jacket off. I appreciate that. Thank you. This guy is a, a tough commissioner. I can tell you that right now. It is not cool in this broadcast booth right now. So that's a fourth down stop that works for the Spartans, so they're going to get the football back. Were you an athlete? I was a high school athlete. I did not play in college at all. I played uh, basketball, baseball, and golf in high school. And uh, thought about playing baseball at Robert Morris when I went there, and then they dropped the program the year before I came, so that kind of made my decision for me. Uh, you know, it's a funny story. I was not a sport management major at Robert Morris, and they were really big on that. I was in communications, but uh, I caught a break in that the one of the professors I had got me an internship with the Cavaliers here in Cleveland. So I worked with the media relations office there. So did you work with Bob Price Bob and Bob Price Zink? Bob Price and Bob Zink. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, so it was actually 1992. It was 30 years ago. We might have crossed paths. We probably did back then. That's right, because you were covering them for teams. the TV yeah. station. That's right. I met my wife at Cavaliers practice. Did you really? Did, yeah. Did you know Burt Grafe, who was sure, the, from the, from yeah, the PD? Yeah, that's sure. my father-in-law. I did not know yeah. how that I did not know. You and I have definitely crossed paths before. <laughs> I was, it was in the summer of 92, I interned for the Cavaliers, and that was the year they made the Eastern Finals. They beat the Nets in the first round, yep. beat the Celtics in seven in the second round. That was when Bird retired, and then lost to the Bulls in six in the Eastern Finals. So, I mean, just an incredible time out at the old Coliseum. To, Great time to be, a to part be of that. yeah, part of yeah. that Cavalier crew. This is Dollum on a quick pass up to the 34-yard line. So the Spartans are up 31-0. We've got three minutes and 18 seconds left to play in this third quarter. Case Western Reserve trying to keep pace with Grove City, trying to keep pace with Carnegie Mellon, and trying to, over the next three weeks, move into that academic bowl matchup right here at DeSanto Field with a chance to win a share of the conference championship if they could knock off Carnegie Mellon, who at that point would be undefeated coming into that football game so if they if they beat Carnegie Mellon and they both mm -hmm. they both go six and one or whatever it would be right. then the Spartans get the conference championship they would be co-champions if they ended up with the same number of losses so which they, is what happened a year ago right. between Carnegie Mellon and Westminster but what would happen because of the head-to-head -head, if Case were to win that game they would get the automatic bid, bid. to the NCAA playoffs yeah. and Carnegie Mellon would have to hope for a nat large yep. Which, quite frankly, is not out of the question if that scenario happened, because Mellon has, has yeah. non-conference wins over two really good teams uh, on their resume. So, Fourth and two. Saxton looking over to the sideline, getting the play as it is no doubt adjusted. Three receivers to his right. Deusler's in the backfield. Gage is going to get it. He'll get the first down. He's over the 40. And he is on top of the pile at the 43-yard line. And this is what I talked about, about Greg being efficient. You know, he just wants to keep these chains moving at this point. He's, as he gets to the fourth quarter, he's going to work some of the younger guys in. You want to do everything you can to avoid injuries to your key people down the stretch here. And also, he's not going to be a guy who's looking to run things up. He's not looking to embarrass anybody. He, You know, he's... he's uh, very wise how he approaches these end of game situations. And you know, short of the pick six, Bethany has made Case Western Reserve work yeah, yeah. for every one Absolutely. of their points today. The, the, yeah. the score looks lopsided, but uh, the sense of the game is not. You haven't felt like Case can just move the ball at will during right. this game. I think that's yeah. what you're saying, and I think that's correct. Sean Michael James. My partner Andrew Rossman likes to joke that. When Shawn Michael gets that pass out of the backfield, big fullback for Case, that that's all he needs. That's right. It's over. You can get him a slice of pizza or a chocolate chip cookie, whatever his favorite snack is, because he's earned it. I'll tell you what, a fullback like that's worth their weight in gold, aren't they? I mean, when they're that reliable. 5'9", 200 pounds from Lake High School in Hartville. Matt Christopher was a linebacker at Uniontown Lake a long time ago when I was covering a lot of sports in Northeastern Ohio. That's a it's a name that I remember. He was all Ohio. Inside a minute to play. Quickly out to Deusler. Gage oh, that's nice. to the 40, to the 30. He's on his feet. Tiptoeing down the sideline. Cuts back in. And that's a 49-yard touchdown. How about that? Mr. Touchdown, Gabe Deusler. It'll go as a pass reception, but that's a long way to run. There's the you big can, move you right can see there. It just takes a great route here. 
Makes a couple of guys miss, breaks a tackle there, and then the cutback here at the end is the thing. It looks like he's gonna go forward, but takes the hard cut, and it's pay dirt time for the Spartans once again. So Rhodes again, and he'll kick it into the scoreboard, and it's 38 to nothing. We've got 35 seconds left with you, Joe. Okay. Any, any thoughts? Any parting thoughts? I'm excited for the end of this year. I mean, I think you're right. I think that potentially the academic bowl, I mean, it's always a, a great event, and it's a, it's a wonderful tradition that these, those schools have. But I think if the PAC title ends up being on the line between these two schools, uh, that's going to be a big deal over here. And I, I look forward to it. I think, uh, uh, you know, it's funny, since both schools came in as affiliate members in 2014, they've been in the mix, but they really haven't won that many PAC titles. Case won in 17 and 19. Right. And then Mellon shared with Westminster last year. Uh, this will be, I think this will be the first time where both teams could potentially come into that feeling, having a chance to come away with the trophy. So. A lot of football, obviously, to be played the next three weeks before we get to that point. But if that does turn out to be how it how it plays out, uh, I'm excited to see it over here in three weeks. That game's on November 12th. Yep. It's a 2 o'clock game, just like today. Yep. Coach Debs doesn't like midday games when the sun shines. <laughs> if it's cloudy, I understand. he likes it. But if you've been down on that field at this time of the day, you look this way at all, yeah. Yeah. and you it's, don't see it's, anything. It's tough. It's tough. So again, another another one out of the end zone. Your your kicker that you mentioned has been supercharged, uh, has not lost any of his rocket juice there, it doesn't look like. No, we have not seen him like this. It is, I mean, he's been a solid kicker, obviously, all yeah, season sure. long. But today he looks uh, next level. I mean, I know the wind's blowing that way, but I'm not sure how much it's that and you know, how much he's just uh, just catching it right today. So do you have a... Uh, a game plan for your road trip to Teal this afternoon? I do. <laughs> back through Mayfield, back to Mayfield Heights, and 322 all the way over. It's like the same route I'd come back from when I'd come over when for you were coming from home. ball games yeah. and concerts here when I was a kid. So yeah, it'll be like old, it'll be like old home week driving 322 back to Pennsylvania tonight. Well, the pack works perfect for you, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It, it's home for me. I mean, it, you know, growing up where I did. You know, my mom's a Teal graduate, and uh, you know, I played midget football in their field when I was a kid. You know, things like that. Just th this is this is home for me. I tell people that all the time, and I'm, I'm just really proud of this league and the schools in it, and and the growth and the development we've we've been able to have. Joe, thanks very much, Ron. My you pleasure. Took us through that whole third quarter. <laughs> you have a future in broadcasting. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You did a great Thank job. you for your coverage of Case Football. We oh, appreciate it very much. Our pleasure. Much. All right, take yeah, thanks care. Thanks for being here. The commissioner of the pack joining us in the third quarter. And we thank Joe for that. It was fantastic. We're going to take a break. Andrew's going to put on the headsets. He'll be back for the final 15 minutes. So I'm going to get a drink of water, and we'll be right back. In search of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu, Table 45 Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering cuisine from around the world created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at tbl45.com or on Facebook. Welcoming back Andrew Rossman back to the booth. Deep pass, left side, perfect pass, caught, still on his feet and running for a touchdown for Bethany. Trey Green in the green shoes. I think I'm going to take off. That is take the headset off. unbelievably perfectly placed pass on the dead run. Well, you heard Debs and warm-ups are on the pregame show. They have athletes. They don't always pop out and flash every week, but you see them able to connect and, and get on the scoreboard there. Can't imagine Coach Miller's too, too happy about that. We're going to see the rest of this fourth quarter. Going to start to rotate in some depth, some of the backups, just to get them that experience. And good news, bad news, they're going to be out there. Bad news is they're going to have the same expectations as the starters. So. You know, I was just about to ask you, 
my partner who's a former defensive back how excited you were as the point after touchdown is up and good when DJ Wolf got the pick six you weren't in the booth then Joe was with me he got the pick six went in for the touchdown as a defensive back that's got to get you charged and then that happened yeah. now I, I've got to give there was good coverage it was a perfect pass yep. there was only one ball one place for that ball to land and it landed it, 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 you know exactly where it needed yeah I mean it's it's tough you don't necessarily expect to, to shut down an offense with athletes like this for four complete quarters you do want to chase that shutout but it's okay it's not the end of the world you know obviously you don't shoot or expect to have big plays like that but you gotta come back you'll be out there you'll get another chance and yeah when they put in guys that aren't necessarily the ones or haven't had too much experience on the year you got to hold them to the same standard that's how you build a culture that's how you build a locker room and quite frankly how you build a winning football team and if you're on bethany's side you i mean you've got to like two things that have happened here in the second half one that extended drive that ended in a fourth down conversion that they couldn't make and then that touchdown pass yeah. I mean, you, you know, got to build down on. 38 nothing they're not giving up you got to build on it. i think we said they had one win last year they've got one win so far this year so at that point you know we'll, we'll call that the lowest of the lows anything is positive momentum any scores i mean they can look back and say hey you know we move the ball a little bit on a really good case defense, able to find the end zone and hopefully build from that. Antonio Orsini with the football down at the 25. So up 38-7 with a whole fourth quarter to play. Do we see a lot of ones here on offense? If we do, I would say this is the last drive. And it looks like Kip's gonna come out to start. Could be the end of the day for Saxon. He's still got his helmet on, he's over in the huddle looks like they're just starting to mix in some of the some of the ones and twos and the reason you don't do it all at once you do want to see how some of the backups perform with say the starting offensive right. line yeah. or the starting you know other starters on the offense tanner because, stoops is the back in the backfield now yeah yeah and it's you want to find out how they perform when they're still out there with the starters tanner will get the fake kip's gonna break a tackle tuck it run it and he's going to pick up big yards 15 all the way up to the 40 yard line and just catching up on stats here before that long play for bethany they were at 97 yards total only 34 through the through the air so that play the play almost than, it was almost exactly as it may have 75 yards yeah more than exceeded their passing total for the game orsini 14 rushes 85 yards no rushing touchdowns today for the spartans However, that means that Drew Saxon probably had a great game. 16 of 20 so far, 212 yards, four TDs, long of 49. Receiving perspective, Dalem, Nurik, Orsini, Sean Michael James, all three or more receptions. So more of the same that we've seen this year. Spreading the wealth, getting everybody involved, keeps everybody happy in that locker room. At Stoops with the three yard run, you mentioned four touchdown passes for Saxton today. You know how many he had total going into today? I think it was five, wasn't five, it? Five, yeah. So here we go. This is this is the Drew Saxon that we we see. And, you know, we did play, or the schedule was a little front-loaded. Uh, we'll say the, some of the tougher teams outside of Mellon was in the front half of their schedule. And they do have Westminster still coming up, always, always a tough out. But, you know, you accumulate the stats against some of the teams that are more towards the bottom of the league. Now, the commission, when he was in here, said that Westminster was up 24-7 going to the fourth quarter in that game against Grove City. Pass is incomplete at the 40-yard line. So if that happens and the Spartans and the Tartans win out, it's, it's for everything here on November 12th. Well, now looking, there's two and a half minutes left. It is 24-17 Westminster. Westminster has the ball. So, hopefully they're able to bleed out the clock there, take down Grove City and help out the Spartans by taking taking out the Wolverines. But you gotta go out and execute. So yeah, it's like we said, it. Grove City drops one, then Case does truly control their own destiny, which would be good. Really Fromberg's in a slot on the right side, the fourth quarterback. Kip is in the shotgun, he looks to the right. And he's gonna throw it to Fromberg. And it's a completion run out of bounds at the 45 yard line. He's a good football player. 6'1", 200 pounds. He's good, good route, goes up. Number 27 of the defense will be out for one play. Able to high point the ball, he's a good football player. And he could throw it, we've seen it in the past. We've seen it in warm ups, we've seen it last year. He can, he can spin the ball if and when he needs to. So this is the future with Kip and Fromberg. Yeah, 
yeah, it, next year I would say it's probably some some form of those two guys, and then you sprinkle in Aaron Phillips as well, and it really gets fun. Stoops, and you can hear the Stoops as he gets the football down to the 40-yard line. This is probably the most fun you have as, as a football team. When you put in the work, you're able to, to build a big lead. Then you can start putting in some of the backups. And, you know, it's a good sign that the sideline's still in it. Those are your guys. Those are your brothers out there. Root for them to get the chances and capitalize. Kate Parlett now in the game. He's at the tailback spot. He has spent most of his time in the slot in that jet sweep. Second down and five. Parlett straight up the middle, needed five, and he got almost all five of them. Dexter Smith got him pretty good there. It was a good composite run. Smith they would uh, let him lay the wood. Jack Breyer, number 23, has now checked in, and he'll line up as a blocking back. It's third and one. Let's see if they run behind Breyer. Breyer in motion. And they'll run it right up the middle. They'll get the first down. Nice. Keep the ball moving. No matter who you got in there. It looks like kind of a hodgepodge of starters on the offensive line, getting some backups in. But looks like they got the, the right mindset. Put your head down the last. 11 and change for this game. It's going to be very run heavy. It's Parlett right there in your shot, number 21. Spartans with the football at the, at the 33 of Bethany. Working that play clock, working that game clock. Parlett's going to get it, try left side. He's got blockers. And he's met and tackled at the 30-yard line. Nice job that time by Jean McLaughlin. Spartans hit the road next. After what will end up a victory today, they're actually on the road for two games. They're at Allegheny on October 29th, and then at Westminster for an afternoon game before they come back home on November 12th to take on Carnegie Mellon. Good little hole. Parlett's a good little player. We saw him early get mixed in, get some, some action on the jet sweep. Now he's getting straight handoffs. And you know, for the most part, it's been positive yards, five, six a carry. That's an eight yard carry. And subbing in Parlett back in the game. Action on this series is Tanner Stoops. Nice, slow, purposeful drive, taking that snap count all the way down to inside 10 seconds before they run the play. The screen left. This is Arrington needing some blocks. Doesn't get many. He gets it to the 22-yard line. Now looking elsewhere, it looks like Grove City has the ball. Two minutes left. Down seven. They need to go 84 yards to tie it up. So we will keep you in the loop on that one. Well, if they had Patrick Mahomes, all they'd need is, what, 15 <laughs> seconds? 13. It was 13. 13 got it done. Second down and nine. Ian Kipp, the sophomore quarterback out of Mentor. He's going to keep it on the draw. There was a hole, and it closed quickly. Gets it up to the 17. I thought initially that he may have a chance to go all the way with it. Yep. Interested to see where he ends up as far as final rushing yards. Coming into the fourth, he had six for 18. It seems like a lot more than that. Let's 
Stoops back in. You can see the sun just making that field look like it's washed out completely right now. Stoops will have the hand up, up the middle. He's got space, gets it inside the 15, down at the 11 yard line. Oh. And that's enough for a first down. He's not making many cuts. He's getting the ball, head down straight, go forward. There you go, carrying D lineman. Hop on the train. Timeout, injury timeout. Stoops is 5'9, 200 pounds. He's a sophomore. Southeastern High School. Coach Debs got the crew all huddled up. There's a look at this every bright Saturday afternoon. I can't believe it's October. It's almost November, too. It is smoking hot, at least in our booth. Imagine it's similar down on the turf. Yeah, the sun is, is beating into this side of the field right now. If you're in the <laughs> stands on those aluminum bleachers, you're pretty hot as well. But yep. you know what? The way this week started out, why should we complain? Sure. Take it as long as we can get it. Get your player getting a walk off the field in this series over time. Bethany actually holds the advantage. They have 13 wins to eight for Case. But Case Western Reserve University has won the last six in a row and they'll make it seven today in the last nine of 10. This history dates back to like 1965. And all of the Bethany wins came before 1982. I almost couldn't believe that stat when I saw it. Case is eight and 13 against Bethany. I think you touched on it. I don't know if they have a, a worse record against many, many opponents. Bethany at the time, in the mid 60s and 70s into the early 80s, was a NAIA powerhouse. They won a national championship one year. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. But as you touched on, it's been all case in recent meetings. So I know there's been a couple games where Bethany draws the unfortunate task of playing case on homecoming. A couple times they've played after a bye, too, and Case has been dominant. As is the case today, sparked you off last week. And as you heard Coach Debs say to John Schwartz in our pregame show, they really spent last week concentrating more on the next four weeks, not necessarily today. A little bit about today, obviously. But they know they've got lots to do. And this is a touchdown for the Spartans. And there's the young man who's had a great afternoon. That's Caden Parlett. Parlett took it nine yards, and he took it for a touchdown. Love it. Get the new guys in. Get them in, get the experience, and you know, on top of that, get them in the end zone. It's really, really big for building confidence. Well, how fun for Parlett to get a touchdown today. First year player out of Napa, California. Maybe you're, maybe his family's watching today. If they are in Napa, they have seen a, a really good breakout day for First-year player, Caden Parlett. Yep. Yeah, he's been great. He's been great. This game has really changed in the second half. It was 17-0 at halftime, but as you and I talked, Andrew, it really didn't feel like a 17-0 in control type of game. But that has changed here in the second half. It's now 45-7 with 7.02 left. this Grove City team. They got no quit. So we said they needed to go 86 yards. They are down to the Westminster 18 with 47 seconds left. Wow. They're getting close. They need a touchdown and an extra point. Potential overtime coming up there. They were down 24 to seven. In the, in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, but not a lot of time left. I think it was about six and change. So I don't know if you heard my talk with the, commis co the uh, commissioner on the tie-breaking situation, but if, if all three teams finish with one loss, the coaches voted a couple of years back 
to go with point differential in those games. And the Spartans would put themselves in great position to be declared conference champions. Because they lost by one point. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Well, let's hope that it doesn't get to a tiebreaker. All right, now it gets fun for the, the Spartans defense. You got a bunch of young guys in. When you hear young guys, they're going to be energetic, they're going to be fast, and they're not really going to know where they're going. So you get some coverage bust, but usually you get these kids out there and they're going to come downhill and look to hit something pretty easily. Well, first defensive plays, a nice stop after a short pickup. In the middle there, number 95, William Kerr. Kura Jr. out of Rochester Hills, Michigan. Robinson to throw over the middle, a little high. Good play by Stewie there coming down. And this is where you don't, I mean, 45 seven's a great score. It's dominant. I think it's reflective of how well Case has played today. This is where you do not want to give up points. And I'm telling you, Coach Miller, he doesn't expect a single yard to be given up here. So look for them to play aggressive, play fast, and hopefully clamp it down, close this game out. Third and eight. Robinson to throw. Going to step up. He's got room. He'll dump it to his tight end. And all the way inside the 45-yard line for Bethany goes Jacob Nunoz. So they needed eight, and they got more than that. Tick, tick, tick. Going under six minutes left. Bethany and Case each three timeouts. Don't expect uh, to really see a lot of those used. Just kind of go normal flow of the game to close us out. Pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. And reaching up and batting down that pass was Daniel Obloy. I think it was Daniel. Yep. There we go. Yeah, good job. D-line. They're either getting to the quarterback or getting their hands up. Probably the second or third tip pass today. See backup defensive back Michael Stewie out there. Stewie is the holder on all the place kicks and field goals, and he gets some defensive time today. Right side, Hodo up near the 40. Samuel Ward. Lined up at a cornerback spot. Samuel wears number six, first year player out of Pittsburgh, Mount Lebanon High School. And I have good news. Westminster has closed out Grove City. Grove City had a throw to the end zone from the 15 at the, at the buzzer and wasn't able to complete it. So that is a positive result for the Spartans. They got to take care of their business and then hopefully in week 11 at home here against Carnegie Mellon, they'll be playing for the title. Deion Parker needed six. He got seven on that pass catch. So the chains move again. We're inside five minutes. You got to walk to the booth next door, tell the PA announcer to announce that Westminster school. <laughs> Robinson again. This one in and out of the hands of Parker. You know, Robinson's not that big. Certainly not the tallest or, or heaviest out there. He can, he can throw it pretty well. I watched him in warm-ups. He was throwing basically standing 40 yards, 45 yards. I mean, that's without a run-up. Yeah, and he struggles with getting it over the D line and just being a shorter guy. It's, it's hard to see the passing lanes. But when he's had to drive a ball to the outside on these comeback routes or outs, it's a pretty good, pretty good zip on it. 5'8", 150. He's a senior out of Miami Gardens, Florida. Came in today with eight touchdown passes, added another one today. He's got nine. He's 
Going to step off under center with 4.43 to go. Throw, middle pet, field, oh. almost picked. <laughs> that was Stewie. Oh. Great play. Stewie had it in his hands. I know Michael's family. He's from Avon Lake. Great family. Another Shoreman. Yep. Good play. Good break on the ball. His dad was a wide receiver at Virginia Tech and went to an NFL training camp with the Detroit Lions. So he'll talk to young Michael about catching that football. <laughs> I know you're a defensive back, son. Yep. <laughs> well, that's why he's a defensive back, not a wide receiver. Robinson in trouble. Third and long, lost it to the end zone. Oh, no, almost a great catch by Green. I can't believe it was even wow. that close. I mean, that's a big time play by a wide receiver. Great throw. Good job by Jack McCray from the Spartans. He didn't necessarily get his head around, but he did influence and impact it enough just to get it out. Look at that. Oh, he almost caught that. Good defense. Good coverage. Fourth and ten. Robinson deep again, Green deep again, and just over the outstretched left arm of Trey Green. Good defense. Keep him off the board. Green can get down the field. They can run. Back to your point of athletes. They can run. They just haven't had any, any firm pocket. They haven't had any time to let plays develop. And you can start to see if they do, if they are able to put it together, they got guys on the outside that can make it happen. So I think we're going to see another steady diet of Stoops and Parlette. Yeah, we got Aaron Phillips in. He's going to run the ball at some point. There we go. Quarterback draw. Phillips still on his feet near midfield. That started at the 33. He's up to the 49. Yeah, another local kid from Medina Highland. Our fourth quarterback of the day. And we see him. We saw him, I think, in the second quarter out there. Now in at running back, Jack Breyer. Breyer standing to the left of Phillips. Phillips again finds a seam. Does a nice job of reading what that defense is doing. He's good. He's going to play a lot of football for Case. Getting good reps this year. Learn the offense. Go in. Pick up some positive yards on the ground. Underrated part of the team. He's the holder on place kicks. But I would imagine as Drew Saxon, you know, finishes up his last year in the program, looking ahead, we got not one, not two, but three quarterbacks that it looks like Coach Debs is comfortable putting out there. This time the throw, and it is caught at the shoe tops. I mean, we're going to have to see that one in replay. They say it's good. It's Grants. Yeah, and that's a true a look. A RPO concept. Boy. Yeah, sure, he caught it. Sure. Was it the shadow that hit the ground or the <laughs> football? <laughs> it was the shadow, Ron. Clean catch. Third and short. Looking to pick this up here, and then from there they can pretty much run out the clock. Have you ever been successful at catching your shadow? No. <laughs> no. Not yet, but you know what? The next time I got him. Yep. Phillips up to the 35. That's a first down. He needed two, and he got about seven. From there, that'll just about do it. 212 and counting. No one's going to stop the clock at this point. Assuming this holds, 45-7, that's exactly what you want to do against this team. Come out here early, often, 
you know, going in 17 nothing at half, it was probably the most lackadaisical 17 nothing we've seen in a while. But able to put it on in the second half and, and put the rest of the league on notice. You know, they're not going to have off weeks. They're going to come out, score points, and, and do what they got to do. Well, and you certainly gave future opponents enough to look at on tape too today with some different looks. Oh yeah. You know, one of which was you know a jet sweep with. Parlette, I had not seen that this year in the home games that we had done with Parlette, and they ran it early. It's not like it's something that they've run, you know, here late in the game. And a lot of screens. This is probably the most screens we've seen out of them. And then the quarterback mix. Kip got a lot of playing time today. Yeah, he did. And I think if you had to ask Coach Debs, that's probably what he wanted, what he envisioned. Didn't have a ton of worry about this game, but it's still good to go out and, and get him the reps. Parlette again. Almost got outside. Gets down to the 27-yard line. And they'll run one more play. One final play. Go find the end zone. Get a touchdown. Football will be down at the 22, and that's going to wrap up this football game. There's 27 seconds and counting on the clock, and of course the play clock is 35, so there will not be another snap. Good win. Going to five and two. 45-7 is your final. Spartans improved to five and two overall on the season. They are now four and one in the pack, keeping pace with Carnegie Mellon, who stands undefeated.